My Lord, oh my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. A priest was telling me about an experience he had one day in his parish. Apparently, he went to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel and found a lady praying there. She was in the first pew with her head between her hands, as if detached from the hustle and bustle and looking profoundly recollected, undisturbed by the noise of the door opening and closing, in deep prayer. The priest was saying that he was so captivated by the prayer of this lady that he knelt down on the spot and started praying, Lord, I unite myself to the prayer of this lady. I want to learn to focus only on you, to pray like her, to recollect like her, to be able to... <laughs> yes, his prayer was interrupted by that atrocious snort, like a bear with a cold. <laughs> the poor priest was confused for a second, trying to understand what had happened. When he saw the lady start shaking her head as she slowly recovered consciousness. <laughs> and he immediately readdressed his prayer. Lord, forget all that I said. <laughs> Just teach me to pray. Full stop. Right? <laughs> See, all that glitters is not gold. <laughs> I was reminded of the story when I read today's gospel about you, Jesus, warning your disciples against the deception of appearances. You remark on that contrast between the scribes and the poor widow. The scribes made display of virtue, but in truth their hearts were empty. The widow seemed to give a mean offering, but you were very pleased with it. Be aware of the scribes, you say, who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor in banquets. Like this sleeping lady in the parish, it is not easy to identify what exactly is going on in their hearts. Some people appear to be generous with God, and they are not. But the opposite is also true. Some others seem like they are not generous, but they are. On one hand, the scribes look like they are pleasing God, but they are not. On the other hand, that poor widow puts into the treasury two small coins, which don't look like a great offering, but indeed it is. All that glitters is not gold, and all gold does not glitter. Now, some people may fall asleep in their prayer, and yet you, Jesus, are delighted with their effort. But they certainly didn't go there to take a nap. <laughs> Maybe they are so exhausted that they could easily excuse themselves from prayer and instead they decide to go to you, Jesus, and try to pray. <laughs> Many saints have fallen asleep during their prayer. Only you, Lord, and I know how my prayer goes. But just as the lady who seemed to be concentrated in prayer and was sleeping like a log, at times it also looks like I am praying, talking to you, Jesus, when in fact I am reading a spiritual book in your presence or listening to a podcast <laughs> or talking to myself. And that alone is not prayer. To pray is to have a conversation with God, like I'm trying to do now with you, Jesus. It may not be words, it may be just my mind and my heart. But when I am in prayer, Jesus, I am not only in your presence, I am with you. A boy was asking me in school the other day, how do I know 
if I am talking to God or talking to myself? <laughs> Easy, I said. It is all about grammar, Joe. <laughs> See, if I say I have had a long day today, I could be speaking to myself. But if I said, Joe, I have had a long day today, who do you think I'm talking to? Well, how do I know if I'm talking to you, Jesus? Well, because in this meditation, I have mentioned your name at least five or six times already. To pray is to talk to you, Jesus. Just reading the gospel or a text by a saint is not prayer unless I make use of it to talk to you. So, to listen to 10 minutes with Jesus is not necessarily prayer. It becomes prayer when you say to Jesus, that's right, Jesus, that happens to me. Or, Lord, I ask you for the same thing the priest is asking for. Or even when you say, gosh, Jesus, this priest is boring me to death. <laughs> Can you help him to learn how to preach? <laughs> I was reading yesterday the testimony of this chap called François Xavier, who was having a difficult life with drugs and alcohol. After fighting back suicidal thoughts for months, François decided to take his own life. He wrote a letter to his parents, explaining everything. He stole their car and left. And during his runaway, he met a nun and, and decided to open his heart to her. He told her everything that was going on inside. And she listened. And when he had finished, she replied, Well, thank you very much for trusting me. But it is not me you should be telling all this to. Tell Jesus. She took him to a chapel where they were having adoration and said, There, tell him. So he tried and started talking to you, Jesus, saying, I don't know who you are. I don't know you. But let me tell you my story. And so he did. And everything changed after that. He reset his life and is now a happy Catholic man. Well, I would say the same. You who listen to this 10 minutes with Jesus, make sure that you talk to him. Otherwise, this would be 10 minutes with Father Spanish accent. <laughs> and that is not prayer. To play an audio is not the same as to pray with an audio right? <laughs> Only you can transform this podcast into prayer. And just as the scribes looked like they were generous with God, and they weren't, I need to make sure that I don't just look like I'm praying, but that I pray, that I talk to you, Jesus. Let me say it again. Prayer is to talk to God. And reading beautiful religious texts, or listening to someone talking about God, or writing your journal, or talking to yourself, it is not necessarily prayer. Not everything that looks like prayer is prayer. And the opposite is true. As we learn from the example of the poor widow, her two small coins didn't look like a great offering. But for you, Jesus, it was. At times, some people seem to please God, but they do not, like the Pharisees. And at times, some people don't seem to please God, but they do, like the poor widow. That is why we can't judge. I know in my heart, if my prayer is a five-star prayer, only you, Jesus, and I know. So, not all that glitters is gold like the flashy display of the Pharisees. And not all gold glitters, like the humble widow's offering. My prayer stays between you, Jesus, and me. Sometimes I'm so exhausted that all I can do is to put myself in your presence, Jesus, tell you that I love you, and then look at you in silence 
for the rest of my prayer. And some other days I'm full of energy or inspired. Again, some other days I will spend my entire prayer trying to fight back distractions. I don't know what people may think when they see me. And I don't care. <laughs> I know when I am generous with you, Jesus. Mary, my mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and Lord, teach me to pray so that my prayer becomes a five-star prayer, the one that God is expecting from me, pure gold, shining and glittering or hidden and dull as he wishes. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.